welcome to The Crafty Cottage. My name is Tuesday. I'm so happy that you are joining me today because we are going to be working on part two of making a junk journal. this is part two I will go ahead and link part one for you up here and down in the description for you to check out um, basically in part one we made the cover to my junk journal in today's video we are going to be making the signatures and attaching them into our junk journal so instead of me rambling on let's go ahead and get into this video first things first for today's tea in my adorable little Tasmanian devil cup that I've had since I was a toddler. Um, we have tummy mint tea and I decided to bring the box to show you guys because this is the coolest box. Look at it. And that's so cool. Um, this tea is actually delicious. Um, I think it's supposed to help with like belly aches which I get a lot. Um, I don't currently have one. I just wanted some mint tea that wasn't overpowering peppermint. Um, so tummy mint tea milk and honey as always. And for today's candle I have the what's left of my pumpkin spice candle. Um, it is almost gone so we'll see if we make it through this video with this candle. Without further ado let's light this candle and get into this video. Okay so this is our journal cover that we made in part one. Um, nothing too fancy. Um, again, I will link, it is linked in the description box for you to check out if you have not already. Um, so, we're actually going to set this aside for right now um, because we do not need it yet. So I'm going to set it aside until we do need it. Um, first, I'm actually going to show you some supplies that you're probably going to need and or want um, in order to do the signature making. So I've got my ruler that I've been using, craft knife. I also grabbed some scissors. I also have this tiny metal ruler, pencil, or a Sharpie, or a gel pen. Or you could also grab a fine point Sharpie, like one of the pen Sharpies. You're also going to need, well not need, but optional are paper clips or tiny binder clips, some embroidery thread, or something similar to bind with, a pokey tool. This is an awl. It is very sharp on one side. Um, I have also in the past used a nail, which is perfectly acceptable, um, but really anything that can poke through things. And obviously you're going to need some kind of paper. I picked up many different kinds of paper that I have. Um, I haven't really decided completely what this journal is going to be for, so I just grabbed a whole bunch of different kinds of paper um, and we're going to figure it out. So let's go ahead and get started. I lied to you a little bit. Um, we actually are going to need our journal um, and our pokey tool. So this journal spine is about two inches, which can fit, I would say three maybe four signatures. All right, so this spine is about two inches. Um, I am attempting to figure out how many signatures I would like to fit in here. Um, comfortably, I can fit three. Um, if I wanted to test the structure of the journal, um, could probably do seven if I counted right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, 
So I'm trying to figure out, I don't wanna like overdo it. <laughs> I might just do three and see how that goes because my intention is to make more journals. So we're just gonna do three on this one. Um, so what we're gonna do is, you can mark this or you can just poke it. Um, but I'm gonna slightly measure. I know a lot of journal makers don't like to measure, but I, I'm not completely measuring. I'm just measuring where I'm gonna put my marks. So I'm gonna have one there, one there, and one there. And then from the top. Is my head in that? I'm sorry if my head's in the shot and you can't see. All right, so where I made these is about an inch or so from the bottom, maybe a little more than an inch. Um, and I'm not really measuring how far from the, from the bottom. I'm more looking at this dot that I made and making it in line um, on the top. So I'm gonna put it about there and then line up this one. there and this one there all right so there is my three dots there probably can't see it kind of blends in all right so i've got my three dots one two three and three dots one two three so i like how pam I like how Pam um, remembers where the top of her journal is. Me personally, I have this little hot glue knot right here, so I know where the front is. But um, I like how she does it. Um, so the stitching that we're actually going to be doing. So I like the um, the technique that she uses when she is uh, putting signatures into her journal and the way that she remembers top is when she puts in her middle dots. Um, so I'm gonna show you what she does. So first, here is our first line. So we're gonna come to the middle, which is about here. It's about in the here area. But she goes a little up. Not far, not very far, but a little bit. That way these are closer than these and you're not gonna get confused on what's the top and what's the bottom. So I am going to do that. And one will go, let's see the middle is about here. So right here, right here. I was a little bigger than I anticipated, but that's okay. And right here. Okay. So now that I have all of those marked, we're going to take our awl or our pokey tool. I just got this one from Hobby Lobby. I think it was six or less dollars, but it's actually pretty sharp. Um, I forgot to mention one thing that you are going to need because I forgot to grab it off my fridge and that is uh, needles. You're going to need a needle. Um, I recommend you get, what is it called? A darning needle, I think. Um, I am specifically going to be using this needle right here. Um, I don't know if you could see that maybe if I zoom in. I'm going to be using this needle. It is sharp on one end, um, but the eye of this needle is actually pretty big in comparison to some needles. Um, so it's easier to get the embroidery floss through this. Um, but I recommend getting either a darning needle, which I think is um, dull on one end, um, and they have really big eyes in the needle. So you are going to need those, just not right the second. All right, so what we're going to do, I'm actually going to bring you in closer so you can see all of my dots. Um, we are going to take our pokey tool and we're just going to poke through the book. 
And you actually need to put something underneath so you don't poke straight through your table. Let me find something. So I wasn't even recording, I thought I was, and then I dropped my all. Alright, so I thought I was recording and I wasn't, but I've gone ahead and poked these first two holes. Um, can you see them? They're right. These two, I already poked those two. You can kind of see through them, I think, I don't know. Um, didn't realize I wasn't recording, so here we go. Um, you're gonna want to get something to put behind your pokingness. I don't know if I even got that part on camera, but I got this composition notebook to poke through. Um, so you're just gonna take your awl and put it on your dot and poke it through. Um, it doesn't really take a lot of pressure to get it through like the initial poking. Um, but once you get it through, can you see it poking through right there? I'm just poking it a little farther so I know that that hole is good and open. And so then we're just gonna keep, we're gonna go down and keep doing that. And if you drew the hole or the marks like I did to um, mark where you're gonna poke, um, and one is maybe a little off, just go ahead and put not nudge your all to where it's in the right spot. Like I said, this is not taking that much force at all. <laughs> that was an accidental pun. I did not mean to do that, but it was funny. I'm trying to keep it in frame, but close enough to where you can see what I'm doing. All right, and then we've got our last three. Hook this one. I do um, have a plan. I have so many plans. How many times in a video do I say I have a plan? Anyway, I have a plan to do a video on different kinds of journal stitching. So if you guys are interested in that video, go ahead and let me know in the comments. Um, and I will get working on that video. And our last hole. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is actually poke those back through because I don't know if you can see that, but they're kinda, the holes are kinda raised out. Um, so I'm going to poke them back through. Ew, my all is sticky from all the glue. So I'm just going to poke the holes back through to the other side without injuring myself, hopefully. And there's a hole. 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 Ooh, where's the hole? There's the hole. There's the hole. And last one. There's the hole. Alright. So there are our holes. I know I will inevitably poke myself, so I'm going to attempt to keep the cap on that. Um, so we've got our three holes, um, and you can tell that this is the top because these are closer than these. Alright, so the next step, we do not need this for now. Our next step is actually going to be to make the signatures. So let's go ahead and get this out of the way while we put together our signatures. Okay, so I think for this journal I'm just going to use regular white copy paper. Um, and I have a couple ideas for this journal after I finish it. I'm either going to just use it as a regular junk journal um, or I'm thinking about making it into a pen pal journal, which if I do that, I'm definitely going to show you guys what I mean by that. Um, but the basic gist of it is a journal where I can put my pen pal's letters 
Um, so I didn't want to use fancy paper on that because then I would just be covering up the fancy paper. So I think I'm just going to make it out of, cop make my signatures out of copy paper, just plain copy paper. So what you're going to do is take, no, we're just not going to use all. Um, I want my signatures to have 10 sheets, we'll say. So that gives me 20 in a book. So we're going to get our um, paper. Um, and I said I'm going to be making three signatures. So let me uh, get my paper in their stacks and I will be right back. All right, so I have three separate stacks of 10. Um, usually, hold on, where did I put it? I keep misplacing things. So in my previous junk journal that I made, my signatures all had um, a piece of scrapbook paper on the outside, um, kind of like a little booklet, um, which would add an extra sheet, which is fine. Um, but for this one, I don't want them to be individual booklets. I just kind of want it all to run together as one book. So I'm keeping it all just plain blank paper. So then all we're going to do next is take our pages and we are just going to fold them in half. Since these are all the same um, size pieces of paper, you could do more than one at a time. I just like to do them one at a time. Um, to I was going to say to ensure that they're all the same, but that's not really an accurate statement. I mean, I guess it is. What I mean by that is like, you know when you fold more than a few sheets of paper, like they all just kind of like push forward and do the wrong thing. Like you fold them and they're not like crisp and stuff. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I like them to be crisp, um, which I put this tablecloth down. I got it for free. And I figured it'd be nice to have for videos and when I'm doing messy crafts so I don't mess up the craft table like I did with a stamp. Um, make sure I'm recording again so I'm not just doing this without you guys watching. But um, it's actually kind of making it hard because it's one of those like lined tablecloths which makes the table kind of soft. Which I mean is fine, it's like super doubled up. Um, I think it's folded in fourth because I just have it like covering my little area that I needed um, because I didn't need it to cover the whole table right now. And I have stuff way down on the end. All right, so there is one section of the book. And what you can do is grab a binder clip or a paper clip and clip them all together. That way you aren't mixing up uh, signature papers. I hope everybody is doing well today. Um, in my last junk journal video, I was getting quite <laughs> angry with my junk journal, so I just wasn't talking. So, um, I hope you're prepared to listen to me ramble, so it keeps your attention and, um, not just an awkward silence. So, um, hope everybody's doing well today. I had a half day of work. So then I came home and I started laundry. Because usually I do laundry on Saturdays. But my sister is participating in a craft fair with her business. And I'm going to go help her with that tomorrow. Um, speaking of my sister's business, don't forget um, that I have a coupon code for you guys. In the, I will link it in the description to all of her um, shops and her website. Uh, but the code is CRAFTY, spelled like the Crafty Cottage. And that will get you 15% off your first order, which I think is a pretty good deal. Alright, there is book number two. Okay, 
getting another binder clip to clip all of these together. Okay, and then the last stack. What am I doing? I'm doing that wrong. I usually also will film videos on Saturdays, but again, since I am helping my sister with the craft fair, I figured now would be a good time, especially since I had only a half day. Titus isn't home yet, but he should be here soon. Um, I might finish this video before he even gets home, which would be nice. <clears throat> but if not, that's okay. Um, just take a little intermission to tell him hello. I realized that, um, you know, making videos and stuff, you're not going to get a perfectly quiet video unless you live by yourself or you're just that nitpicky. But like, I have a fiance and a cat. Like, this house isn't empty, so it's not quiet. So I'm not too upset if sounds happen. I mean, if they're really distracting, I'll edit them out. But otherwise, sounds aren't that bad. I mean, I guess for Titus's videos, they could be because he is doing music. Um, but, I mean, it doesn't bother me all that much. It's actually kind of fun to go back um, when editing and seeing what I can hear. I apparently grabbed all pink things. All right, clipping our last one. Actually, we really don't need to clip the last one. But I am going to set this aside because I might need it later. Um, so then, all we're going to do is, since I don't have um, an, a set outside, they're all the same thing, I'm just going to open one and start putting them all together. Three, four, five, six. Can't pick up this piece of paper. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, so there is one signature. See, this is what I was talking about. When you fold them and they like, my lights, they're all facing down, so I can't show you like what's happening. Like, you see how they like stick out a little bit? That's what I'm talking about. All right. Trying to get them to all settle in together. All right, so I'm actually going to clip back here. So there is one signature, and then we're going to just do that with the other two. So I guess I could have done them all at the same time. And in reality, aside from the first video of the making the cover, which I'm sure would be a much quicker process um, whenever... What am I trying to say? It would be a much quicker process um, if I had... A, glue that worked right, and B, I wasn't filming a video. Um, I'm sure I could make a journal pretty fast, um, especially if I was using a book cover instead of making the book cover, um, but I wanted to make it from scratch because I don't want to keep tearing up a bunch of books, which is a cool, like it's a cool thing to do, like making a journal out, out of a book which I will be showing you guys eventually, just not yet. Uh, I'm just not quite there yet. Uh, we gotta get this journal finished before I can show you how to make another one. Okay, make sure it's good and down. And then 
clip on it. And most people would have a bone folder, which I don't have. And apparently my ruler just wants to break that. There we go. That's better. Do that with these. I need to get a bone folder. I just haven't yet because really I don't have the money for that. Hey, my watch check. Our last signature to put together. Two, three, four. In case you were wondering, yes, my candle already went out. I think it went out within like three seconds of lighting it, but I haven't relit it because it's just gonna keep going out, which seems like a waste, but. Um, I had a candle going earlier, so the conflicting smells would be strange. Okay. And clip them together. All right. And then I'm gonna fold them with my scissors. Okay, so now we have our three signatures. This is completely optional. I like doing this just so they don't mess up. I'm gonna keep the clips on there that are on there. Um, but I am also gonna take some paper clips um, and paper clip the other side, so down here. That way I know my papers aren't going anywhere. Um, and really you could do that with another binder clip, just binder clip both sides, but I'm just going to use a paper clip. Mostly because I brought them over here and it would be dumb to not use them. And last one. Okay. So there are our three signatures. First, what you're going to do is bring back our journal. One thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that your signatures fit inside your book. The journal itself is nine by six, so what you're gonna wanna do is make sure that your, you're gonna wanna make sure that your signature fits perfectly inside. So this signature would line up about here, or you can just lay it down to make sure it aligns with the spine when you're closing the book and see if it fits the way you want it to. Um, and this one actually fits perfectly inside there because it was eight and a half by 11 and you fold it in half and it'll fit. Um, so I'm actually not going to trim these um, like I originally thought I was going to, but you would just put your ruler down on a craft mat and get a craft knife and you would just slice away. But since they fit perfectly, I'm going to leave them as is. Um, but you're more than welcome to do that. So what we're going to do, you're gonna actually have to be closer for this. And I'll turn it sideways so you can see it. All right. So you're going to take one of your signatures and you're going to line it up next to one of your rows of dots, poked holes. So you're going to line it up about where it's going to go. And I mean, really, you could do this with all of them. I'm actually going to turn it around so I can see. Make sure all of them are together and they're the same height. So make sure they're all together and you can actually for this part clip them all together. Need a bigger clip. Let me get a bigger clip. I got a bigger clip and I'm just gonna align them, make sure they're all together. And clip them together. All right. So then what you're gonna do is make sure that they're all um, aligned, which is the point of putting the clip on there, but mine moved a little. And then you're just going to line it up where your lines are right here. 
but like make sure you can see them. Maybe it'll be better for you to see. So then you're going to take your pencil or your marker or something and you're going to just mark up the side of your journals to mark where the hole needs to go. So then you're left with these three dots. And you can tell which way is the top because these are closer than these. Make sense? Okay. So now we can remove our journal again, our journal cover. I'm going to actually take this off so then we have them separate again. Now we're going to bring this in and now we're going to flip them backwards so that where you just marked your holes, get it back up a little bit. So where you just marked your holes is actually going to be on the inside of the books. And this is one reason I like to have the clips um, so that they're all um, in the right spot. So then you're going to grab your awl, your pokey tool, whatever you're using to poke. And you're just going to poke through all of the pages. And I am already through. And flipping them backwards actually helps because if you can see that, um, it pokes in and creates like this little bumpy, but from the outside it's not there. So then we're just going to keep poking. And one more on this one. And all the way through. And putting the clips on the signatures ensures that they're not going to move around. So this one is done. You can actually, once you've poked your holes, Flip them back and then you can see, maybe, you can see your holes on the outside. So now we're going to do that with the other ones. Folding them backwards also brings all of the papers to the middle. Um, which is a huge help. So poke and poke through. Poke, poke through. Um, there are other tools that you can get that will poke for you. Um, Pam at the Paper Outpost, which is who I am basing my journal off of, um, actually has a Crocodile Big Bite, which you can get them at Hobby Lobby, you can get them off Amazon. Um, I currently don't have, not the money, I could I could purchase one, but since I am not yet, this is only the second journal I've ever made. Um, if I actually get to the point where I am selling journals, I will probably invest in one. Um, but really this method, especially since this is so sharp, um, ow, it really isn't that hard. Um, to poke them through and then you've got really nice like big holes I'm trying to show you that you can see through it it's just kind of complicated to show on camera um, so then there's our three signatures um, with our holes on the inside we can get rid of this again all right so the next step is going to be 
to get your embroidery thread or whatever you're going to be using. You're gonna be picking whatever matches your journal if you're putting this on the outside. I can also show you how to make a journal where your stitches aren't gonna be on the outside. They'll be concealed on the inside, kind of like this one. Um, they're too close. Kind of like this one where you don't see the um, signature things. Um, but for this one, it's going to be on the outside and this is mostly pink and black. So I think I'm gonna use pink thread. Um, do light pink because it matches better, I think. So you're going to need about three times the length of the spine, pretty much, just to make sure that you have enough. Um, so Pam says three, I'm doing more because I just wanna make sure that I have enough to do this. And All right, so I went back and forth, I think three times. So got a pretty big piece of string. All right, so what we're going to do is get our needle, which I have mine on this little magnet thing so I don't lose it. Um, and you're going to just poke yourself because that's what I did. You're going to thread your embroidery th thread through your needle, just like that. You'll have a tail. Um, make sure you don't lose that. Don't lose the tail. All right, so what we're going to do is then get our signature. All right, so you can tell this is the top because these are closer than these. These are closer than these, okay? So then look at your book and you can tell these are closer than these, all right? So you're gonna take your needle and go through the middle hole. So this is the outside. We flipped it back around, right? So you're gonna go in the middle hole and then you're gonna go through the book. And a lot of journal makers go through the last hole first, so work back to front. So we're gonna put our needle in until we come out the back, and then you're gonna pull it through. And you want to keep some of it here. So don't pull it all the way through. So then what we're going to do is go to the top hole in the book and go through. And then you're going to open your book and go through the top hole. And you're going to try your best to go all the way through all the pages. I'm going to zoom in so you can see a little better. And then we're just going to pull that through. all the way. No, they're tangled. The way I've stored my embroidery thread for so long in these boxes, it's kind of tangles a lot. All right. So then what you're going to do is take your needle and go, you're going to skip the middle and go to the last one. You're going to go in the page, in the signature and in the hole. Oh, you can't see that. And in the hole at the end. Until you're all the way through on the back. Can you see that right there? And then you're going to, going to pull it through. Okay, and then we're almost done. Make sure you keep your tail. And right now we're pretty loose off the book. So we're going to have to tighten that here in a second. Um, but the last step 
is to go from the bottom back into the middle. See how we're through the middle and then through the middle again. Try really, really hard not to thread your thread. Come on. All right, and there we go. So then we have our two tails. Oh, I threaded the thread, dang it. I thought I had it, where are my tweezers? So now you have your two pieces, but our book is, our signature is pretty loose. So what we're gonna do is tighten that up. So then, let me see if I can get closer. All right. So then what you're gonna do is you have this middle string in the middle of your two strings. You see, did you see that? How it's in the middle of these. Cause then what you're gonna do, you're gonna pull tight and you're gonna tie a knot around that string. you're gonna pull it really tight. And then you're gonna do it again. Two knots should be good enough to keep it, but I always like to do a third, um, just to make sure. All right, so there is our first signature, and I'm going to cut this, but keep it kind of long, because I don't know what I'm gonna do with that later. All right, so then we can take our clips off. And there's our first signature. All right, there it is. Number one, ta-da. All right, so let's keep going and get our other two in there. Is this long enough? One, two. Okay, so that's three times the length. We're gonna try it. We're gonna see if this one will work for us. So we're threaded. Oh, I zoomed you way out. Come back. All right, we're threaded. We have a little tail. All right, I'm gonna set that off to the side while we get our signature. No, you're too close. Okay. All right. These two are closer than these two. Okay. We're gonna get our needle. And we're gonna go through the middle. And now we're on the middle signature. So we're gonna go through the middle, middle hole. All the way through. Make sure you leave a little tail. And then we're gonna go into the top. Okay, now we're gonna go into the top. Into the top. Oh. Whoa. Oh, I almost lost my tail. Alright, there's that. Am I all the way in? And make sure that you are in the right sections. Um. So we're staying in the middle. We're not going over here, we're staying in the middle. All right, so now we're gonna go from the top to the bottom, all the way through, all the way through, pull, make sure we still have our tail. Then we're gonna go into the middle I'm pretty sure I poked another hole. Now I have a dilemma. 
Alright, do you, can you see what I did? The thread is coming out in a different part of the fabric than the whole. So mine are going to be a little messed up, but that's okay. So in the middle and in the middle, making sure we're not getting in that other thread. All right, now we're gonna take our needle out. I'm just pulling, I think I did it again. All right, making sure we're good and tight on the back. The bottom isn't very tight. So then we're just again going to tie, making sure it's on either side of the middle and we're just going to tie around it. One knot, oh, I dropped it, hold on, try again. One knot, two knot, and then three. There's signature number two. We can take our clips off. And oh, there's signature number two. Okay, so then we're going to need to get some more thread because we used it all. One, two, Three, cut. All right. I'm going to thread our needle. You know, I realize by my lights being weird, it's not even facing me. Maybe that's better. All right, thread the needle. Make sure you have a tail so you don't lose it. And then our last signature. These are closer than these. So we're gonna go in the middle. And then the last one in the middle. Okay. Okay, all the way out, making sure you leave a tail on the inside. And we're gonna go in the top. In the top, trying not to poke yourself. Oh, out of the way. Okay, and then you're gonna go from the top to the bottom. All the way through, and then into the bottom hole on the bottom. Making sure we're not poking any new holes. Okay. And then from the bottom into the middle. Okay, we're in the middle. And trying really hard not to thread that thread. Go in some more. All right, so then we're on either side, we're pulling tight, making sure it's tight on the outside. Top isn't very tight. All right, and then we're gonna tie our three knots. One, one, two, and three. Okay, and then cut the extra. Take 
take off our clips. And there is our third signature. All right, we have all three signatures in there. And here is the outside, just like that. And so then when we open, all right, so we have one signature, two signature, three signature, and then the back. So putting only three in here, there is a lot of space in between the signatures. So you could put more to make it chunkier. Um, I could to I could definitely put more, like at least two more in here, right here between these two. Um, and that honestly wouldn't be bad. Um, I might actually do that, but I'll probably do it off camera if I do. Um, but this is our journal. We have technically completed our journal. You're more than welcome. You can add stuff to this. You could put like pockets on here, um, pockets on the back, but um, this is it. This is our journal. We are finished with our junk journal. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you guys had fun making journals with me. I enjoyed making this journal. Um, this is the first time I used fabric. Uh, the first time I made it completely out of scratch. Um, I'm actually very excited to use this. Um, I will probably end up using it for pen pal letters and such, um, which if I do, I will definitely show you guys that video. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed today. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified when I post again. And I will see you guys in my next video. Mm -hmm.